Welcome to another episode of Legitimate Matters. Very often I have conversations with colleagues, uh, friends, and just people that I meet coming and going. And politics is such a common conversation these days. We find that people are either for or against. Many people are frustrated. But in all of that frustration, I often ask people, what can we do about it? And it's, there seems to be a loss. Today, we're going to talk about what you can do, what I can do, what we can do as common men and women to become involved and really make a difference in our country, regardless of what party or what your political positions are. Did you know that there are six different, that there's actually many, but six digital grassroots organizations that you might want to pay attention to um, uh, this year as we move towards the midterm elections? There's Indivisible, there is Swing Left, Flippable, She Should Run, Sister District, and it starts today. Are you familiar with any of those grassroots organizations? Well, today we're going to talk about Indivisible. And with me today, I have Micah Ber Bergdale, yep. okay? And I also have Killian Jordan. And these are participants in the grassroots organization. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Well, I didn't, I didn't hear about Indivisible two years ago because I don't know if it existed. Mm -hmm. But Indivisible, if I understand correctly, actually began when uh, our current president took office. That's correct, yep. Michael, can you tell us what is Indivisible and why did you get involved? You know, after the election, there were a lot of different people, particularly in our community in the South Bronx, that were looking for an outlet to get involved. Uh, they were concerned about the direction that the country was taking and really felt that the election was pushing them to get more involved. And so we were looking at different organizations and Indivisible was really the main one that came up. Mm -hmm. uh, it allowed us to be able to essentially advertise the group and be able to create Facebook page and Twitter feed that we would be able to then organize other people to come and join us in our neighborhood. And so, you know, we just kind of got involved with that and have met other people involved with Indivisible and then participated in various different community, you know, marches and groups and meetings on a regular basis. And we hear that, that word grassroots, and I know what it is, and we've heard it certainly uh, during political races, you know, grassroots this, we've heard of the Tea Party, a grassroots mm -hmm. movement. Can you, Killian, give us an idea or a, a definition of grassroots? Well, I imagine it's a little bit different in everybody's head, but mm -hmm. uh, for me, what it really means is local action. I see. That uh, we undertake to start our change right at the beginning I with see. ourselves mm -hmm. and our neighbors and our friends and our, uh, our town or whatever it is, you know, whatever, however you see your locality. However, the wonderful thing about Indivisible mm -hmm. is that if you live in an area like ours, where, for instance, the Democratic Party is already very powerful, we live in a little bit of a bubble here, um, where we don't have to meet everyday people who are big fans of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want to help, Indivisible has many ways to do that, including things like phone banks, where you can dial into a number and it connects you to politicians um, and people of influence all over the country. And you when you dial in, are you getting, uh, how, is there a recording that you get when you dial in? Or? It depends on the situation, okay. but you, you can often be dialing direct to your congressperson, your right. senator, your, through that entry number. By just a telephone call. Yeah. Just a telephone and call. And some people are really good at that, and mm -hmm. they like to do it, and they can leave a short message that pumps up the numbers mm -hmm. for those members of Congress because many of them, I mean, we know that they are all far too influenced by money from many um, 
are of many origins, but they are also influenced by their constituents powerfully. And if they hear from a lot of people on a particular subject, they find it harder to resist that kind of pressure. They can't stand up in public and say, this is what you wanted for me, and so I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, what they have to say is, you told me what you wanted from me, and I didn't do it. Okay, so in other so, words, it holds them accountable. A bit. Okay, to, a bit. to some degree. And I think, I don't want to underestimate the power of feeling as if you have made a difference. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes it's a march, as mm -hmm. you said, uh, and sometimes it's phone banking. Sometimes it's sending $5 to some candidate in another state so that they can feel you reaching out to them. Do you feel that uh, grassroots organizations such as Indivisible were created because the country is moving in the wrong direction? I, that's a question I'll, I'll ask you, Micah. Do you feel that uh, the United States of America is moving in the right direction, or is it moving in the wrong direction, or are we just stuck? Uh, let me answer that in a little bit of a different way. I, I think we've become very divided, mm. and in that sense, I think that polarization is a move in the wrong direction. I see. Uh, but at the same time, part of what I view grassroots is really having that conversation with ev everyday people. And you find that people that aren't as politically engaged, if you're willing to have a conversation with them about mm. what matters to right. them, right. that all of a sudden you realize there's more that brings us together than there is that mm. divides us. Well, what I heard you say is having that conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my frustrations uh, with our government today, uh, where if you're Democrat or you're Republican, I feel that both sides are somewhat guilty of just not listening because it's their way or the highway. Um, I believe uh, I've seen instances where there might be uh, where one side might have a good idea or might be on at least the right track, but just because it's coming from the other side, you know, we have parties that dig their heels in and will not support it. That's my observation. But do you feel that being a part of this type of an organization, and it doesn't, it's, and, and for those viewers that are watching who may not necessarily be democratic, but do you feel that getting involved in, on this particular level actually does make a difference? Is this something that you're feeling? It does not, I'm sure every indivisible is a little bit different too, mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of different chapters spread around the country. Uh, my background, you know, coming from a rural state, I was born in northwestern Iowa, Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, my family is all from South Dakota. So I tend to really focus on the divide that I'm seeing between mm. the urban communities and the rural communities in America. And I think there really is a cultural divide that has started to spring up throughout the country and trying to figure out how you bridge that gap, how you have conversations where people that are in small town America don't feel like you're talking down to them. Um, because again, I do think there are a lot of issues when you really break it down, especially issues like corruption, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. where we agree on a, a lot no of the- There's no party line. Yeah, you know, there's resolutions to this, and we all say we don't like the corruption that we see in government today. Wow. Well, this is a great conversation. I want to continue this, and I want to talk about a few other things, uh, such as the upcoming midterm election and the role that grassroots organization plays in that. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to talk about gerrymandering and to try to get to understand that as well. So when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. Legitimate Matters. We'll be right back. Close your eyes for a second. What do you see? Am I black? White? Yellow? Red? Skin is just skin. No matter, no, matter. no matter the color. Red, yellow, black, or white. We are all, we're, all we're all the same color when we turn off the lights. When you decide not to vote, you find out that the electoral candidate won by a vote. And because the new president won by one vote, you realize that you could have been the deciding factor for our country. Stupid. Which makes you upset. And when you are upset, you decide to throw things. And when you throw things, you end up hitting someone bigger than you. And when you hit someone bigger than you, you end up running for dear life. And when you are running for dear life, you end up getting hit by a car. You don't get hit by a car. Go out and vote on November 6th and make a difference in your country. 
Welcome back to Legitimate Matters. This is William Paris. I'm having a great conversation with my guest today, uh, Micah Bergdale, and also Killian Jordan with the grassroots organization Indivisible. And when we went to break, we were uh, talking about, or I had mentioned that I wanted to talk about uh, what's really at stake in the upcoming midterm elections and a word that we hear so often, which is gerrymandering. And I know what it is, but there's... It's not clear to a lot of folks that I have spoken with, so either one of you can just jump right in. Uh, you know, gerrymandering is really focused on the very precise drawing of our congressional districts, our state representative districts, in a way that ensures you have very tight packing of people from a certain political party. So, for example, in a lot of states that have been controlled by Republicans, they'll put Democrats in a 90% Democratic district, and then they will try to minimize the amount of Democrats that are in other districts. So maybe it's only 52, 53% Republican, and then you have a minority of Democrats. Mm -hmm. So that way they have just enough votes to be able to get the maximum number of congressional districts or state representative districts in a state. This happens only within a state. Mm -hmm. So we have states where there is a 57% Democratic electorate and a 37% Democratic representation mm. in the state house. Okay. Uh, and that's just because those lines were drawn so carefully and mm. with such a fine razor that all of the Democrats could be pushed into this district and their influence in the other districts is reduced. So who's actually making those kinds of decisions that would create um, what I would consider to be such an unfair uh, competition? Well, usually it's the state legislature. Mm. And the Republican Party has been extremely well organized and well financed in their efforts uh, at the local level to mm. get commissions to present plans mm -hmm. for districting and then get those through a state house and then they're solid they're gold because the democrats have largely not been resisting it on the scale with which it's been and, carried in and just in case viewers don't understand the districts are redrawn every 10 years so uh, you have anyway the, you have the census that comes out and then right after the census comes out uh, every 10 years then you also have a redrawing of all of our congressional districts all of our state legislative districts that's supposed to be purely on the basis of population but what partisans have done is they've drawn the districts in a way that tries to optimize them for electoral purposes so then as we move uh, oh okay so as we move closer to uh, the midterm elections, uh, can voters have an impact on these kinds oh, of things? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. You know, I, I think one of the good things that does happen is 2018, you're still two years away from the mm -hmm. next census. Mm -hmm. You already have demographic shifts that just happen naturally within every single state, and particularly amongst young people. Uh, you have young people now that are able to vote right. that didn't even exist a matter of eight years ago That's in terms right. of part of the election population. So I think that is a huge part of what will help shape this election is if we can get more younger people to participate in the midterm election. Generally, young people show up for the presidential election, right, right. but for the midterm election, they, they don't. They do not, and they don't even realize that it's taking place. It goes right over their head, and I know that to be a fact because I've had a couple of conversations just recently uh, with young folks who have voiced their frustration with what they can consider to be the administration and uh, without trying to lead them on, I said, well, what do you think we, and I intentionally use the word we, can do about it? And he said, well, they need to. And I said, who's they? And, and here we are. And then I said, well, do you realize that the midterm elections are coming up when we have an opportunity to make a difference? And he said, well, how is that going to make a difference? Mm. And well, do you know that when it is? And, and I saw sort of like a blank kind of look. So I realized that the more I talked, the more I was losing them. Mm -hmm. in the conversation because they were really not aware. We have in America a singularly uninterested electorate. Mm -hmm. um, the last presidential election, I think 52% of eligible voters voted, something mm -hmm. like that. that. That's the most exciting election. Mm -hmm. And for the midterms, like I know in my district, our district, the turnout for the last 
local election was around 12, 14 mm -hmm. percent. Okay. So when you ask what you can do, you could show up. You could Just show up. showing up. I have a political point of view I would prefer to push. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm a registered Democrat, and I would like to see Democrats come to the polls. Because if they do, there are more of us. Right. All we have to do is show up, and we can change everything. Well, let's take a look at uh, where we are today as we move closer to the election and consider the, uh, the popularity of the current of the president. Mm -hmm. um, recently, his, uh, he, he's up in the polls, even though historically he's still lower mm -hmm. than his predecessors at this particular time within his presidency, but he's, he is getting a bump. Uh, in terms of his approval rating, and I think that they that I would say may have something to do with um, his relations with North Korea and the possibility um, uh, whether the meeting does or does not happen with Kim Jong Un. Uh, also, in terms of the the hostages being freed, uh, the economy being on the rise, even at which he will undoubtedly. Uh, take credit for. Mm -hmm. So my question then becomes, is it possible that his lack of discipline, his unpopular personality, um, his reputation as um, a misogynist, and the list goes on, but maybe his lack of being able to be predicted, his unpredictability, might be the strength of his presidency. Does that make him a good president because could people around the world consider him to be slightly unhinged? Well, it's not people around the world. The people around the world do consider him to be slightly unhinged, but it's not helping his popularity here. I think one of the things that happens here is that, as I said, the electorate is largely uninvolved. And I think a lot of people just don't pay much attention to the news because they're not sure how they can affect it anyway. And one of the things he communicates is that you can't push him around. Right, right. And I think everybody who wanted to drain the swamp says, see, he's not a politician. Right, right. And they like that. And I understand liking that. I would like to see the swamp drained as well. Unfortunately, he filled, refilled it. But uh, I, I think that just refusing to play by the rules looks good to people who want to see somebody strong. I want to finish that in point. Leadership. I want to finish that point because that's that's a, a good point that you made. So uh, crazy is the new saying. So uh, we're going to go to break and let's pick up on that point because uh, Micah, I want to get your take on that as well. Okay. But we had, we need to go to break. So legitimate matters. I'm your host, William Paris. We're going to be right back. We're going to finish this conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back to Legitimate Matters. Once again, I am your host, William Paris, and we're having a great conversation about uh, the grassroots organization Indivisible, and we're talking about uh, how you can become involved and how getting involved can really make a difference. And I'm speaking uh, with my uh, guest today, who is Micah and Killian. And before we went to break, uh, we were talking about how the idea that a 
president, a sitting president, could be considered um, unhinged, unpredictable, um, a racist, misogynistic, um, and the list of unflatterable uh, adjectives can go on and on and on. But could having someone who tends to be somewhat unstable and unpredictable actually be the strength of the presidency? Well, I think the challenge there is that people, it goes to the whole entire immediate gratification thing. If you don't see immediate consequences to mm -hmm. someone's actions, uh, they start to see that as being normal, mm -hmm. and they also start to see that as not really having any type of uh, consequence to their own lives. And so I think one of the problems that we have is that what he's doing may or may not end up having some long-term ramifications. But <laughs> I, at the end of the day, because we're sitting right now, you know, weeks after he's done some of these actions, uh, it really hasn't resonated with people that there's going to be a problem with that. They actually see it somewhat as a strength perspective. If you are horrified by things Trump does, um, each thing he does makes you gasp and rear back and sort of wonder why a bolt hasn't come out of the sky and smitten <laughs> him. And can I that think, happen? Uh, I'm just kidding. Let, can we make it? Not really. Um, but, but if... <laughs> If you're neutral on him or mm -hmm. if you kind of lean towards him, when you don't see that thunderbolt come down, mm -hmm. you think, well, it can't have been that bad. Mm, right? right? And there is nobody who can discipline him. True. That's, I mean, that's a matter of both his position, his personality, his character. Uh, so the fact that he, I think you're absolutely right, that he's not disciplined for his bad behavior in a way that, that even not particularly news junkie voters can see. I mean, he's been disciplined in the sense that all of Europe and most of Asia has said, stop. You well, know, we, his, he's ruined our international relationships, I think, in oh, a very well, powerful way. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they can't punish us. Right. You don't get thunderbolts from alienating the president of France. Well, let's take that and let's talk about what mainstream media is talking about because <laughs> they're really dictating um, mm -hmm. really the, the feed uh, that that we are digesting from on a continual basis. So here we say, well, you know, you're, you're showing us the hostages being released and you're, you're talking about whether it's the economy or this or that. But let's talk about just recently where I read uh, that Trump calls for huge cuts to children's health insurance program. So Trump is demanding Congress gut more than 15 billion in already approved spending to pay for the GOP's tax giveaway. Mm -hmm. Well, my concern is that mainstream media, regardless of whether we're talking about Fox or whether we're talking about CNN or MSNBC, they will take something very small that Donald Trump says or does, and we don't buy into it. We already know. Let me give you a perfect example. So you have someone um, in the administration that makes a comment about, uh, about uh, Senator John McCain, which was a horrific comment. Mainstream media runs behind this story asking for the administration to, apology, to apologize and to make a public apology. Now, I am a voter, I'm an American, and here's my response to that. I am not interested in the administration's apology because it would not be sincere. They don't want, they don't apologize if you don't mean it. So why are we spending well, so much time talking about it? I think this is what you were talking yeah. about in a way. You're talking about the media, not just creating, but feeding, fueling Correct. on a minute-by-minute minute I mean, basis the it, polarization that if, is so damaging. If, if I could say what Trump is good at one thing, it is how he manipulates and controls the media. And yeah. he has been for decades. Even though they don't know it. Yeah, well, I think some of them do, do and, and they don't they feed, mind. They, they feed into it. Uh, okay. And I, I think it, it you know, it helps their viewers. ratings. Yeah, yeah. They, it helps their ratings and they're able to... But, then, but that leaves us in the middle of nowhere. Uh-huh. Okay, that leaves us in the middle of nowhere. Being served by no one. Being served by no one. 
one. And that is the travesty in this whole conversation. And that's what takes us back to why those viewers who are not paying attention to the midterm elections, those who don't come out to vote. And uh, Micah, you mentioned young people who couldn't vote mm -hmm. years ago are now old enough to vote. And we're actually in my next episode, we're going to talk to someone who is in Generation Z, mm -hmm. who is going to be telling us about um, her perspective mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, politics and young people and how they think and feel. But Mike, but but what can we say to the viewers today to say, don't fall asleep at the wheel, mm -hmm. okay? If you wait until 2020, okay, it'll be too late. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to be involved, and you can be involved. I, you know, there are a number of key issues that I think people should be paying attention to. We just had another shooting at a school just yesterday in Texas, and uh, the students from Parkland continue to be very engaged. Uh, I think, you know, as we bring out the next guest, you're going to have a conversation with people that it, that also has become normalized, mm -hmm. and it can't be. And I think a lot of young people and people even in my generation and Killian's generation are saying enough is enough. We've got to change what is happening in our culture as it relates to guns and our acceptance that this is somehow a normal thing that can happen in a school. Uh, the and I joy think of indivisible is that it tells you to say that to your congressional mm. representative, mm -hmm. and they can't ignore it for long. Mm. And I'm I think, sorry. yeah, no, and I think we're getting organized around issues like that that actually have an impact on people's lives. The opioid crisis that's taking over this country, whether you're in rural America, middle America, urban America, you have an epidemic that is taking more lives right now than the height of the HIV crisis. Mm -hmm. And yet we have a president and a health and human services department that has done absolutely nothing. And quite honestly, whether it's the Mueller investigation or Twitter, it's a complete distraction from the real issues that are facing people's lives. They want to hear, how are you going to solve these problems that I'm experiencing right now? And I think that's what Democrats have to do for the midterm election. And on that, we have to close. And that was a great close, Micah. Killian, Micah, you, it's, I can't even begin to tell you how much I appreciate what you've been able to share today. In the next 30 seconds, just tell the viewers exactly how they can just, do they go to the website? Yeah. Uh, so our group is located in the South Bronx, but if you go to the Indivisible website, uh, you'll be able to actually sign up and you could either find an existing organization that's in your community. Anywhere in the country. Anybody in the country. Anywhere. And you can also create your own Indivisible organization. So if you have a tight-knit group of people in your community that you want to bring together around issues that you're passionate about, uh, go to the Indivisible website and create your own organization too. Or you can find a grassroots organization that you're more comfortable with, but continue to watch Legitimate Matters to find out more about things that are legitimate and important to you. This is William Paris, your host on Legitimate Matters. As always, thank you for watching. We'll be back with another exciting episode.